right, all right. Once again, um, I do apologize for the mix-up on the verses. Um, but God is still good, amen? amen? God is good? All the time. He's so good? Oh, yeah, amen, amen. Um, before we go into the word of God, let's uh, join me in prayer. And before we pray, I'll, I just want us to all take a deep breath and just to really breathe in God's grace today. Whew, Lord, I come before you. Father in heaven, Lord, we come before you today as one church, as one body, to seek you in spirit and in truth. And Lord, we just thank you for this time you have given us just to hear your holy word. That is through your word that we get to know who you are and the desires you have for us. So I pray, Lord, as I preach today, I pray, Lord, that the words are flowing out of my heart and my mouth will be words of you, Lord. Holy Spirit, fill our hearts. We need you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So the scripture that was messed up but we were able to finally read together, um, it says, Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And actually this verse, I would like to say, is probably one of the most popular verses in the whole book of Psalms. Because if you look at it, it's a wonderful promise that God has given to his people, right? That if you delight in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart, right? And actually, the whole book of uh, Psalms 37, it's a psalm of David. For those who don't know Psalm, David is like the main author. There's other authors to the book of Psalms, but David is one of the main authors. And Psalms 37 is a psalm of David. And in 37, he basically tells those who are righteous, those who are good, you know, don't worry about what's going around you. Don't worry about all the evil things that are going around you. Don't worry about the evildoers that are around you. Right? Don't worry about the people who commit evil. And then David explains even further, and he says, like, those who are evil, all the evil things eventually will fade away, will wither away. And then he tells the righteous people what they should do, right? And David continues. He's saying the fate of the wicked, the fate of the evil is already prophesied. Why? Because our God is a just God. He will judge accordingly, right? And he tells the righteous people, so do not be distracted. Do not be dismayed or hindered by the evil thing around you. But rather, what you should focus on is your relationship with God. Are you tracking with me? David is saying, hey, don't worry about the things that are happening around you, but rather shift your focus and focus what's, on, what's more important, which is your relationship with God. And this is where Psalms 37 verse 4 comes into play. And to really understand this verse, you know, we need to dissect it a little bit. Are you guys tracking with me? Like I mentioned earlier, the verse that we read today is a very popular and well-known verse. But it doesn't really mean that people understand it the way David wanted people to understand it. You guys tracking with me? A lot of people misunderstand this verse to the point that they use it to support prosperity gospel. You guys know what prosperity gospel is? Right? Man, like you see those TV evangelists on TV. It's like, if you come to my church and donate to my church, then God will make you rich. Like, that's like that prosperity gospel, right? Allison's like, yeah, we all seen it on TV. They drive those private jets. They got Starbucks and all that. I'm not judging, okay? But this is what a lot of people use this verse for. They use it to support their, for their own benefit and for their own gain. Right? They claim that if you delight yourself in the Lord, you will definitely get what you want in life. Right? And why do we believe it that way? It's because it makes us feel good. Amen? Nowadays, we become a generation of believers. Instead of worshiping God, we end up worshiping our feelings. Right? We make our feelings God. Therefore, if God doesn't make me feel good, 
If I don't feel a certain good way when I come into church, then I don't want any part of it. But is that the reason why we come to church? Do we come to church so we can just feel good? So God can make us feel good? No, but we come to church to what? Worship God. And it's through worship where we experience the love of God. Amen? It's through worship we experience the grace of God and the mercy of God. So a lot of times, false teachers and false preachers, uh, believers will take it that way. But is that what David really intended this verse to be? That if you obey God, that he will give you whatever you want. That he's some kind of magical genie that you rub three times and he's going to give you three wishes. Hey, don't get me wrong. Sometimes I wish God worked like that. I wish God worked like that. But hey, that's not who God is. Amen. There's an important lesson that David is trying to teach us in this verse. And to know what David is saying, we have to first understand what the word delight means. Now, the word delight comes from the Hebrew word, which is anag or chepet. Anag or chepet. And what that means, it means to take pleasure. To take pleasure. So, in other words, delight means to take pleasure, to be happy, um, to be joyful, to be excited, right? To be joyful. Then the next question that we need to ask is, in whom should we delight ourselves? We look at today's verse. It says clearly, it states that we must delight in what? The Lord. Delight in the Lord. So if you put everything together, today's verse tells us that we must take pleasure, we must be joyful, we must be excited, we must be happy about who? About God. You guys tracking with me, church? It means that our source of joy and happiness is our heavenly, should be our heavenly Father. And you know, church, you know what I see delighting in the Lord as? And I pray that you guys are able to kind of relate to this. But I'm a big foodie, okay? You guys can tell by the way I kind of look. I love to eat. And man, I don't know about you, but food, you know, it could change people, right? It, you know? And I think that's why Jesus broke bread because he knew people love to eat. I'm just kidding. But I'm a big foodie. And one of my favorite food is sangyeopsal. And yeah, right? And for those who don't know what sangyeopsal is, it's basically pork belly, Korean barbecue. If you, for those who aren't Korean and never had it, we should definitely go out as a group and go to, <laughs> and the she's like, no, I don't eat pork. <laughs> but it's pork belly. It's Korean barbecue. And that's like one of my favorite foods. And what I love to eat with it is cooked kimchi. That combination, top three, hands down. And I love it so much. And I love it so much that no matter how my day is, whether my day is hard, whether my day is tough, whether I'm just so stressed out and I feel like I'm at the end, when I see sangyeopsal and kimchi on the table, it changes my mood. That's how much I find delight in it because I enjoy it that much. You guys tracking with me? That's how I see delighting in the Lord. You see, when I, I delight in it so much that when I eat, it just changes my whole mood and my feelings. And I feel okay. I feel good. And that's how I see delighting in the Lord as. Right? David is basically saying, I take pleasure in that sangyeopsal. And David is basically saying, no matter what's going on, Delight in the Lord. Delight in the Lord because it changes you. But unlike Sangisai, where that feeling goes away once you eat your last piece, and you're like, oh, there's no more left. The reassurance that you get from God stays with you forever. Amen? Amen. However, is that the case, church? As we look around us, as we look into this world, and if we even examine our own hearts and our own lives, where do, where do people get their happiness from? Where do people usually take the light from? Right? They take the light in. I know a lot of us sitting here today, a lot of us, you know, we take the light in worldly things. Amen? A lot of us, we take the light in watching inappropriate entertainment. A lot of us, we take pleasure in materialistic possessions. We take pleasure in people. We take pleasure in sin. And you see, it's not, enjoy, it's not wrong to enjoy the blessings that God has given you, right? It's not. Because you worked hard and God has blessed you, right? But we have to really examine our hearts, right? 
really asking, no, what about me? Like, where do I get my joy and delight from? Like, if you look at your own activities throughout your life, your, your day, your week, your schedule, are you able to find God in it? Are you able to find God? Does the thought of coming to church to worship God excite you? Does it bring you joy? Do you still find time to pray and to really sit and soak in his word? Do you, do you find reading God's word boring and useless? Do you hearing the gospel, does it excite you? The answer to these questions will determine whether you truly delight in God or not. And, you know, David doesn't stop here. You know, what happens when we delight in Yahweh? Right? Let's read the rest of the verse. It says, he will give you the desires of your heart. Right? Now, church, this verse does not mean that if we delight in God... He will give us anything that we want, okay? Why? Because not all the desires that we have is good for us. You guys tracking with me? It's not good for us. All the, all, not all the desires that we have, it's not, they're not all good for us, right? You see, church, it doesn't mean that if you delight in God, you know, you will become rich, that you will have your dream job, that you will get your dream car, your dream house, Right? That you will have a lot of money in your name, to your name, right? It doesn't mean that everything you want will be given to you. No, that's not how it really works. I want you to listen to this. If we truly and genuinely, if we truly and genuinely delight in God, the desires of our hearts will eventually align with God's desires. You guys tracking with me? But you see, the problem with so many people nowadays. That includes you and me, and I'm in with you, okay? Is that we determine our desires first before we come to God. We're like, God, I have this and this and this. Well, if you don't on, I need you to answer it right now. God, I have this and this and this. I have this and this is what I want. I need you to answer it. God, if you honor them for me, I will serve you. I will worship you. I will praise you. And what is that again, church? We end up worshiping our feelings. Instead, what should happen first, church, is that we must first delight in God. So that we have the right and proper desires in our hearts. Amen, church. We should always delight in God. Why? It's because he loves you. Amen? I know some people, all my, not in my atheists, but the friends were like, I can't believe you're a pastor. They're like, Tim, like, like what? Like, what makes you want to believe in God? And I'm like, dude, he loves me, bro. <laughs> like, he loves me that much. Right? It's because he gave his life for you. You know, I mentioned earlier that this verse, this teaching, David was basically telling the righteous people what they should do, right? Right? And I remember preaching this to my, one of my older churches, and they were like, well, Pastor Tim, I don't think I could live out this verse because I'm not righteous. I don't really live a righteous life. Like, I do this, this, and this, and I don't think I'm righteous. And you know what I said, though? Yeah, you're not. You're not righteous. But I want to explain something about righteousness. You see, church, you know, you know, righteousness is not something that's based on your merit. It's not what I do or how I live my life that makes you righteous. It's what Jesus has done for you that makes you righteous. You guys tracking with me? You can never work for it. It's in, it's out of your hands. You don't have the strength and the power to do it. What makes you righteous is because of what Jesus has done for you. Amen? Therefore, you guys are all righteous because God loves you and he chose you to be his. 
Now, it doesn't mean that we're going to be sinless. No, we're going to fall short every day. That's why we need Jesus. Amen? But your life was paid by the righteous blood of Jesus Christ. That his blood covers all of your sins. It covers all of your mistakes. It covers all of your shame. And you are deemed righteous. So you are a saint in God's eyes. Amen? It's because of what Jesus has done for you. So everyone has the ability to live out this verse. Because you are righteous. Because Jesus died for you. Amen? What Jesus has done then is what makes you righteous. The greatest act of love that my God who is righteous from head to toe. Who was seated high on the right side of God. The right hand of God. Gave up his throne to be with me. To be with us. Who was perfect. Came into this world to die. Right? To die for all. Therefore, you are righteous head to toe in the eyes of God. Therefore, delight in God because of what Jesus has done for you. Amen? And when you begin to delight in God, when you begin to realize that God is your greatest source of joy and happiness, then your heart begins to realize, man, God, I need you to fill my heart with your desires. The desires you have for me and the plans you have for me. And trust me, church, if you begin to delight in God, he will give you plans and desires that will prosper you for eternity. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we come before you today. And Lord, we just thank you for your word. And I pray, Lord, that you will remind us of this verse throughout our lives, that you have called us to delight in you. Lord, you are our greatest source of joy. There is nothing in this world that can measure up to who you are, Lord. So I pray, Lord, that you will stir a desire and a passion in our heart to seek after you, to pursue you to the fullest, to really lay down all of our selfish desires and the idols that we had at the feet of Jesus and declare Jesus King, to declare Jesus the Lord over our lives. So I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will be with us, Lord, be with us as we head back to our workplaces, as we head back to our schools. And Lord, uh, we need your wisdom, we need your guidance, Lord. We look to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.